Collages.net has revolutionized the ability to create a design with the release of our newest program, Collages Designer 2.0. Both Mac and PC compatible, Collages Designer makes creating a design extremely easy and its user-friendly features really help streamline your design workflow. Designing coffee table books and albums has never been easier. What you want to do is start off by clicking the green Create a New Project. And before you choose whether you want to design an album or coffee table book, always navigate to the Check for Updates tab down below just to see if there's any updates that will ensure the program runs as smooth as possible for you. For this tutorial, I am going to start off by designing an album. So I'm going to choose Album, scroll to the right, click Next. And you'll notice as you scroll through the different products here, in version 2.0, we now have images for every product. So as you choose your products, uh, for this one we're going to design a photographic cover album, and click Next, you'll see that we have pictures for all of the sizes available. Um, now before we go any further, you also want to click on the Information tab for any additional details or information on the product that you're ordering before you start designing. So we're going to choose 12 by 12, we're going to go next, and the next step is going to be choosing your pictures. What you have the ability to do is choose individual files or a folder. For the tutorial, we're just going to choose a folder. After the images load, you just want to click next, and then give your project a name. and click Create. Once you're ready to start designing, uh, you'll notice on the left-hand side here, we have all of the images that were loaded earlier. And I want to show you guys one of the cooler features of version 2.0, and that is the use of our Auto Flow button, which can be found here. Auto Flow is going to automatically build the design for you, so you don't have to go through individually and create each page. And when you do start the Auto Flow, you, all you need to let the program know is if you want the images to load in picture orientation or if you wanted to do picture order which will put them in order based on the file names. So for this design, uh, just to keep things consistent, I am going to choose picture order and you'll see the program starts designing the spreads up top here. Now after the initial design has been created, uh, you can use the arrow here just to scroll through and take a look at the pages that were designed. And let's say you get to a page uh, like this one that you actually want to adjust the design because you're just not really happy with how it came out. All you have to do is navigate down below to the tab called Page Styles. And you can choose from any of the page templates found down here. And all you have to do is highlight, click and drag. And when you drop the template in, you'll see there's a whole new arrangement of the images. Now to digress a little bit here, you will notice on all of the pages you design, there's a red line around the edge, and that is our trim area, or what we call our safe margin. So anything on the inside of the red is guaranteed to be safe, and anything outside is at risk of being trimmed when the book is actually sent over and placed into production. Now, if you want to adjust the crop on an image, all you have to do is double-click the image and adjust the crop accordingly. You'll see on the outside here, where it's a little opaque, that will not be shown in the box. So you can adjust this to where you want it, hit OK, and the crop is adjusted. We'll do the same thing here. To add a background to one of your spreads, click on the Backgrounds tab. Scroll over to a background that you like. Now you'll notice as you scroll through here, there are a lot of different templates in various colors and textures for you. Um, so feel free to choose one of them. I'm going to use this one right here. And as you click and drag it up, you'll notice that if you want to drop the background over both left and right page, all you have to do is hold the background over the gutter and you'll see the entire spread is outlined in blue. If you just want to drop it on the right, hold it over the right hand side. Same goes with the left hand side. You'll see here as the blue outline is on the left hand side. Um, but for right now, I am going to drop this on both pages. So just hold it over the gutter, let go, and you'll see the background load directly into your spread. 
Now, say you don't like some of the backgrounds or the ba background in here just isn't flowing with the design you've created and you want to import your own background. All you have to do is navigate to the settings button over here on the right hand side, click on it, click add, and then just navigate to where you have that template stored on your computer. Now, for those of you that are also looking to import an image as your background, find an image that you'd like to choose. Uh, for this one, we're going to use 0207. Click OK to add it. And you'll then see the image has been added all the way to the right-hand side under the Backgrounds tab. Simply click, drag it up, drop it in, and you now have an image as your background. You might want to adjust the crop a little bit, depending on, on where that falls. Now one other cool feature that you can do on top of adding an image in as your background uh, is if you want to turn down the opacity, uh, all you have to do is navigate to the Opacity tab found on the right here, and let's change it to 75, hit Enter. Now, while we're already over here on the right-hand side, uh, you'll notice all of the tools that are available here. There's a lot of different tools for you to play around with, so feel free to scroll through these buttons um, and just familiarize yourself with some of the options that are available. Now, once again, I am just using this as an example, but if you did want to add a flourish, say, to this spread on the right-hand side, all you have to do is click on the Scrapbook tab, find a flourish that you want to add, click, drag it up, drop it in, and then you can adjust the size accordingly. And the same thing goes with adding a flourish of your own. If you if you find you don't see a flourish in here that, that really fits well with your design, all you have to do is click on the settings button, just like adding a new background or an image, click add, and just navigate to where that flourish is on your computer. Another really important feature in version 2.0 is the ability to save a spread or page layout as you see here as what we call your favorites. Uh, what this allows you to do is build a library of certain template designs that you can easily access without having to scroll through all of these designs here. So to do this, say for example you want to save this as one of your favorites, all you have to do is navigate to the settings tab found here, click on save spread as page style, and say you want this to always be the fourth page, you just call it spread four. And then click OK. And this way, after you save it, you'll notice it's found all the way on the right hand side. And you can easily access it just by scrolling all the way over to the right hand side here, clicking it, and then dragging it back in. Now, before we export the design to make a PDF proof, one last important feature I want to point out is the ability to change the product. Uh, so say for example you are designing this album, it's a 12 by 12 and you want to change it to another size, all you have to do is click the change product button and choose from the list here to a size that you want to change your book to. And now the last step before checking out and one thing we recommend is creating a PDF proof of the design so that you can email this to your customers. All you have to do is navigate to the upper left hand corner, click File, Create Proofs, and you just need to let the program know where you would like to actually save the proof on your computer. After you save it, simply add it to an email and send it to your customers for review before you place the order. So finally, after you have reviewed your design with careful attention to image resolution and trim lines, what you want to do is click the green shopping cart so that you can check out. And then you want to click order now. Check off the box that you approve everything that is going to be submitted to production. And then click start. The album shopping cart will then open for you. And it's just going to ask that you complete a few minor details before submitting the order. Um, such as for a photographic album, you need to choose the cover type, whether it's brilliant or matte. I'm going to choose matte for this tutorial. Then you also need to choose a paper type, which I'm also going to choose matte as well. You want to choose if it's a studio sample, and also need to choose if you would like color correction or not. And I'm going to ask to not color correct my files. And then you want to click next. 
Give one more final review of the order. Click checkout now. And then you want to fill in your shipping and billing address as well as the shipping method you'd like to have the album shipped. Last step before we send the order over is to just give one final review and also choose your payment method, whether that is coupon code, uh, a credit card on file, or if you have any reprint credit from reprint orders place, you can use that as well. Once everything looks good, you want to click Submit Payment. You'll then see your order receipt, and then you're brought back to Collages Designer 2.0 where your design will actually be exporting over to our server. And then after the order has successfully transferred over to our servers, you'll see a screen just like this, and all you have to do is click OK, and you're all set. So go ahead, download the new design software by visiting the following link, collages.net forward slash free design software. I want to thank Thank everyone for watching and I hope you guys all have fun designing.